Hey everyone, welcome back to the Man Cave 4301 podcast. I'm your host, Big Kev. Just a reminder that you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon. On today's episode, we talked to Dan and Ed from Trademutt to talk about their mission within the brand. For anyone who is new to Trademutt, what they do is bring awareness to mental health in the trading community and get people talking about it. How? Their unique style of workwear is sure and has turned many heads and sparked the very conversation they set out to bring up. The company grew exponentially, so fast in fact that they sold out their first order before it even hit Australian soil. You can also watch this episode on YouTube at the Man K4301. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Now let's get into the podcast. Dan, Ed, thank you very much for joining me on the podcast. No worries, mate. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Kev. Um, I'd like to go through a bit of background on you guys just so that we can get a bit of, a better understanding of who you guys are and where you've come from. So, Dan, I'll start with you. Um, hit it. Sure. Well, I'm a, um, a carpenter by trade, I guess. Uh, tradie for 10 years. I am um, born and bred in, um, in the inner western suburbs of Sydney. And I, um, I moved up to Brisbane, um, yeah, about 10 years ago uh, for two weeks. I came up to work for a builder for a couple of weeks just because I'd, um, you know, had a couple of situations down in Sydney that sort of led me to become a bit disillusioned with work down there. So I came up for an opportunity and, uh, yeah, that was 10 years ago. I never went home. Um, so, yes, yeah, spent my life as a, or my adult life as a, as a residential carpenter um, and, Met some, you know, awesome, different, weird and wonderful people along the way. And one of those blokes was Ed. We ended up working on a, uh, on a job site together up in uh, Brisbane for a builder. We started on the same day together and quite an unlikely relationship. Ed will tell you about where he's from. But, yeah, me, myself coming from Sydney, I'd, um, yeah, we grew up a long, a long way from each other and found some similarities most... Uh, most predominantly our sense of humour. Um, we're, we're very different people, um, but we're extremely similar and the same where it counts. And uh, yeah, that, that, that humour is, is probably the biggest thing for us. So yeah, that's sort of where I've come from. And, and you know, uh, through a lot of weird and wonderful adventures, I've ended up where I am today in the man cave, getting a chat to Big Kev. <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, I think it's important that you guys share similarities and, and also be different at the same time. So that, that's great. Yeah, that, you yeah. guys sort of gel together. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you see it in the photos. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ed, a little bit about yourself. Mate, uh, so I'm from, yeah, Central West Queensland in Longreach. Um, born and bred on sheep and cattle stations all my life. Um, I came to, went, well, when I went to boarding school in grade six, Toowoomba Prep. Um, grade six and seven there, and then yeah, to boarding school in Brisbane for uh, for five years, and then uh, from there, sort of decided that I wanted to go and see a bit more of the world, and that was the Northern Territory. So I went up there for for two years, um, chasing cattle around and, and getting right into stock work and um, getting into horses and everything um, that I'd sort of grown up with, but just wanted to do it on a larger scale. Um, yeah, in stock camps and stuff out there, which was great, and then. Uh, from one, from there, went down to, to Marcus Oldham College down in Geelong, which is like a uh, sort of a private agri um, sector uh, college, I suppose you'd call it. Um, so I did, yeah, agri business diploma down there for one year, which was really good. A lot of good times and a lot of drinking and running around Geelong and Melbourne and all that stuff. So that was really good. And then um, sort of decided that I didn't want to stick there too long because it was going to, you know, cost me a, a lot more money to stay and I'd sort of end up in like the banking sector or something like that. It wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I um, bailed out of there and went home and, and dad was um, sort of, yeah, mum and dad had a bit of a bit of a drought on it at the, at the time I got back and um, I was just helping him move his, his cows and, and sell them and um, decided that I'd go back up to the Territory. Um, I rang up my old boss and said, you know, this is the job I want and wage I want in the house and the car and he met it all and I said right so I'll see you next week so I drove up there and yeah I was up there till about August um, that year and then um, it was actually Easter in that year I lost a close mate to a helicopter accident oh, wow. um, and then that sort of just jagged my 
direction a bit of what I wanted to do. So, um, yeah, when I came back for the echo that year and caught up with my mates, I thought, oh, shit, I better get back here and soak up a bit more time with these boys. So then, um, yeah, went back, gave my two weeks' notice. And in, uh, yeah, it was sort of August, September, and I um, was looking at getting like an agri sales job, something like that. There wasn't really anything on that time um, because, yeah, it was sort of late in the year and no one's hiring then. Um, and I was just labouring a few days a week with, for some mates um, and their bosses while they sort of finished their apprenticeship. And, uh, yeah, it was sort of weird. I came back um, to a mate's place on a Sunday arvo and he'd been to a, a party in Toowoomba and said he'd been speaking to a, a bloke who'd been pocket-dialed by his ex-boss um, during the week and he rang him back. And he said, oh, Jack, um, well, I've got you. Are you looking for a job? And Jack said, oh, no, I'm not looking for a job. He said, I've got one now. And he said, oh, well, if you know anyone looking for a carpentry apprenticeship, let me know. And uh, he, told, he told my mate Harry and I came back and, and Harry said, oh, do you want a carpentry apprenticeship? I said, oh, absolutely not. I said, I won't be doing that. <laughs> he said, oh, well, you're labouring anyway. You might as well just go do it for him for, for a couple of days. I was like, rightio. So I went there and met Dan on the Monday. And then, yeah, by Friday afternoon when I was knocking off, the, the boss said, yeah, we'll sign you up on Monday. So, and that was it. So I started a mature age apprenticeship. And, yeah, three years later I was signed off. And, and now we're yeah, doing what we're doing now. It's pretty crazy. What, was, what sort of timeline is it between you guys meeting each other and starting the business? Um, what have we known each other for? 2014 we met. About five years. Um, so yeah. the way it sort of grew and progressed was, um, you know, we Ed was super keen to learn. Um, I, through my experience of my apprenticeship, it was sort of struggled to, you know, find someone to mentor me so when Ed came along um, and I was the tradie he was real keen to learn so I was real keen to you know teach him and show him how to do things the right way and you know and why I was doing what I was doing so you know so I guess in the early stages I was sort of growing my own carpentry brand and was getting a lot of weekend work and extra sort of outside work and small renos and stuff that I needed a hand with and um, Ed was keen to a for you know a bit of extra pocket money and um, you know B to learn and work. So um, it sort of started like that. We just um, you know got into the cashies together and you know the weekend work or whatever. And um, you know we 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 sort of started to look at it and think, well, we'd be spinning yarns and coming up with ideas every day at work of different things you could do with your lives as you do you know not just what you do if you won lotto but you know different sort of businesses that you know we'd be interested in getting into and through that sort of period of working together and we knew that we gelled and that we could you know work hard together and get things done and we had sort of a lot of common goals and yeah I guess we had this um you know a year and a half or two years in we had this idea of a funky workwear brand um there was sort of nothing out there like it and you know we were sick of wearing the same old sort of dreary old khaki or you know blue mm-hmm. shirts to work and, no variety yeah. yeah no variety we thought oh well let's spice it up a little bit let's let's you know bring bring tradies to the fashion game and let's see if we can't liven it up a bit with a bit of color and flair on on, on a building site and um yeah it's a, it was a really crazy sort of series of events that led us to get to this point um but, um, but, yeah, here we are. You're here and you're nailing it. Mm. <laughs> you're doing so well. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thank yeah, you very much. You're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. So with the, uh, with the colours, it, it, I'm curious to know how that goes through uh, workplace health and safety issues, like because, you know, your bog standard high-vis is either yellow, orange or solid colours. Yep. Were there any issues trying to get these shirts in? At all? For starters, I can tell you that with workplace health and safety, spirits on building sites across the country have well and truly been lifted um, <laughs> and, and are feeling very, very great seeing these things around. Um, Is that from a consumer point of view? 100%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So safety, so, safety point of view. So, yeah. these, so these are um, just all basically for residential people, basically. So all resi carpenters and, and plumbers and electricians um, for um, big commercial sites sort of differs from site to site but uh, for the high vis regulations in Australia we've got stuff coming out in June that'll fit that so it's just cuff collar in the bottom section of the shirt so it still has the block yellow and orange on top with the 3M tape Um, so I'll have that and so we'll be able to yeah sell garments into yeah every work sector in Australia by and it'll still have this 
sort of pattern integrated into it somewhere. Yeah, so yeah, it'll be half-half. At yeah. the bottom, yeah. So bottom cuffs and, and the collar. So um, bottom half of the bottom half of the shirt down there. The shirt. So yeah, just to so these current shirts aren't you know don't conform to high vis everything but um, and you know like everyone says to us like mate they're extremely visible you know you wouldn't be able to miss them um, uh, which yeah. is true they are <laughs> highly visible yeah um, but yeah they're not currently um, I think I, I think in, instead of saying high vis they head turners like yeah you, the double <laughs> take yeah. what what is that. <laughs> Heard that a few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, can you um, tell us what the brand is about? Uh, because the understanding is that you, you Dan, lost a friend uh, on. Uh, a, a, he was a tradie. No, he wasn't a trade. Well, he had just become a tradie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after a long time of looking for a mature age apprenticeship, um, which was one of the most heartbreaking things. He was. He was super keen to become a mature age apprentice uh, apprentice which is which is difficult and just after you know a long battle trying to find a role like that the stars aligned got a position and then yeah and then and then immediately after that took his life um so yeah so that was back in 2015 um so ed and i had the the idea for a, a funky workwear brand and then that happened and for me, that was the first time in my life that I've been, you know, that I've been affected by suicide, especially by someone so close to me. Um, and so, you know, for anyone who's been affected by suicide before would understand the, the confusion um, and, the, and the mix of emotions that you go through, you know, when you experience that. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, a very, very unique and weird, um, weird, weird period of time. But um, that opened my eyes to just how you know much of a or a lack of understanding there is around mental health in this country and particularly a young uh, among young young males mm. um so that was a significant event in my life um and then through continuing to explore trade mart and how we could you know start this start this fashion line um we learned about social enterprise through different connections that we'd made, through the questions that we'd asked. So we learned that, you know, about social enterprise and how we could use profit for purpose and use a profitable business to affect, you know, positive change and positive social change, in this in this case, mental health. Um, and so that the stars aligned perfectly, you know, after sort of recovering from that, you know, uh, experiencing that suicide, we sort of got back on our feet and... Um, and it, and it made perfect sense to us that yeah you know like we can get these work shirts made we can do it you know we can have a funky you know line of work where and we can put a really positive message behind it and um and and yeah take a bit of a different approach i think to to getting guys to being able to talk and that's really the main thing you know about it we're taking a very different approach to the conversation because you know in our from where we're standing a lot of you know the approach that's been taken before is very serious and very doom and gloom and focuses on you know anxiety and depression and the statistics around mental health now we know the statistics aren't that crash hot around mental health particularly for blokes but harping on the statistics is not helping anyone yeah. um and talking about mental health in a very negative light and talking about stigmas and and you know anxiety and depression it's it's not really putting mental health in a great light so who's going to want to talk about it no that's right and i think know. what the platform that you've created it really it, it gives that light-hearted um approach to it like mm. uh, a a more open uh, approach to it mm. so mm. that it, it does get people talking well it's more inviting so, oh what the what's the shirt all about like mm. what's going on here sort yeah. of thing and it, it creates that conversation which is the the pivotal step for people opening up yeah because it, you know that it's that step that is saving lives that um talking about your problems uh and venting and and talking to people that can relate to you as well and and start start that process you know and that's the, that's the first pivotal step yeah i i 100 agree and i think um you know there's a massive groundswell around mental health at the moment everyone's very aware that mental health is a thing and, and more people than not have been directly or indirectly affected by suicide and that's ultimately what we're trying to prevent but um 
you know, we're using the shirts, as we say, to make an invisible issue impossible to ignore. Um, you know, people don't often walk around the street and, you know, say, oh, hey, have a look at your mental health. You know, you can't see it. Mm. Um, so whilst there is that groundswell around it, it's still a little bit of an interesting subject to, to bring up. Um, so with such a, a funky and a loud shirt, you can't ignore it. You can't miss it. Um, the shirts are designed to start a conversation and, yeah, nine times out of ten, someone will ask you about it and they'll say, oh, gee, you know, I've got my, a brother or a sister or a cousin or, you know, someone somehow that's going through this or been through that. And the reality is that's true for everyone. Everyone's been through or going through something or knows someone. Uh, and the more we can create a culture where it's safe and... Um, encouraged to talk about well um you know we're going to definitely bring down the barriers to people uh being able to address you know any any sorts of battles with mental health that they've got mm. i wanted i wanted to come back a bit um to to your friend it, it's uh it's interesting to me to see uh how it affects other people did Ed, did you know him as well never met him no ne never met the guy no. okay so Dan, for you, how did it affect you um, and, and what sort of emotions did you go through yourself? Because uh, with recent events with friends of mine, uh, that things are weighing heavy on them. That they've lost two people close to them, mm. uh, one after the other. Mm. And I want to know how that affects your mental state in dealing with the tragedy and yeah can can you explain how you got through it yeah so initially um there was a huge what if for me because you know the week before dan took his life um you know we'd made loose plans to get together for a beer on saturday night the saturday night that it happened and you know, uh, I don't talk about it much, but on the, yep. on the evening of the Saturday, I had had a missed call from him um, that I was out that I just, yeah, had missed. And then the next day, I woke up on the Sunday morning to the news that he'd taken his life the night before. And so I had a massive, what if I had have answered that call? You know, what if, what if anything? What if, you know, I had have just picked up that phone? What if we had have gone for beer? What if I had have been with him? This wouldn't have happened, you know? And so I, that was a that was a that was a very real you know yeah. emotion that I felt, and that's natural. And there's you can ask yourself all the what ifs, and they're not going to help because the reality is, is you know, it's what has happened has happened. So, um, but that was something pretty real for me at the beginning, and then the confusion was massive, confusion yeah. and trying to make sense of it. And why, you know? Did you know that there was something going on there? Did he sort of talk about it at all? Was there any sort of writing on the wall, so to speak? Look, Dan had had, you know, a, a pretty, you know, I guess we'll say a checkered, you know, okay. past, you know, growing up uh, through his late teens and early 20s, you know, was mixed up in, you know, different things and crowds that, you know, young yeah. blokes tend to be um, okay. and, you know, had, you know, a few experiences in his life that, you know, were... Uh, we'll say a bit unfortunate but you know getting through your mid-20s getting into your late 20s you know he'd sort of gotten past it and gotten through it and grown up a bit and sort of you know at the time was you know stable was in a good frame of mind had a lot of good things happening as I said it just nailed this mature age apprenticeship which was a massive step you yeah know, at that time yeah. this was literally three days before he took his life so no at the time things seemed perfect probably couldn't couldn't be better so yeah mm. how long after this did you come into the mix ed uh with getting to meet dan yeah so i knew so i'd already been working with dan for about a year yeah um and then i was away on the weekend and dan and i were already close mates and when i came back um on the sunday i'd been out of town at a party or something i can't remember now but i remember i came in and i got a message from one of our other workmates saying that dan one of dan's mates had taken his life so um, I just went around to sort of drop in and see him and, and stuff. And he, uh, there were a lot of his other mates there that had known Dan, the bloke that had taken his life. Um, and I just sort of, yeah, just dropped in. And it was, yeah, a pretty hard thing to walk in on. All these um, mates that had just, yeah, had someone just, yeah, 
ripped from their lives. Uh, but oh yeah, just basically went in there and just said, look, I'm you know, here for you and um, sort of, yeah, did everything that I could sort of during that week, which is, um, yeah, just saying like you're there, you know, like I'm here and um, I, yeah, I, I, after I'd lost a mate too, it, it's nothing that anyone says, mm. um, even though they, yeah, both our, our mates had gone in different circumstances, but it was both very suddenly um, and it was sort of, yeah, nothing anyone says really fixes anything. It's just sort of you've got to sort of find your own way a bit. Um, yeah, you just got to find those coping mechanisms. And, yeah. and and I think building yourself a support network is a fantastic idea as well. Um, like like you said, he had quite a few guys there uh, that were related to him, like to, to his friend, that you could all lean on each other and, and confide in and all that sort of stuff. And... And then someone like yourself, Ed, that has come in on the sidelines and, and offered your help as well. I mean, obviously, you're good mates. It's going to happen. But yeah, to, yeah, yeah, just for that extra support is really good. Yeah. Well, that's what mates are for. So, like, exactly. Um, yeah, it was sort of a no-brainer for me. And then, yeah, at work, it was just sort of, yeah, just trying to bring a bit of, bit of joy back to the work day and bust a few jokes here and there and yeah. take the piss out of myself and get your your mind off of things but then um you got but, a friend mate yeah <laughs> sticky fly mate He's sitting right next to me and then um <laughs> and then yeah it was just sort of um you know touch on things when it was sort of yeah right time to sort of reflect back and um get to know more about this bloke that yeah that i'd never met and that dan was you know so close to so it was um yeah we sort of got we got through it yeah i guess um, for me i was going to work every day you know spending 10 hours a day with this bloke <laughs> and on the weekends too, you know, working together. So he's probably the one bloke who I was spending the most time with at the time, all day, yeah. every day. Um, yeah, so yeah. It, is, it is a weird, you know, scenario. It's, you can't really, you just have to process it yourself and know that, you know, as Ed said, there's nothing that anyone can really say I mean, you know, the only thing people can do is be there. Uh, but, yeah, there's there's nothing really you can say that will sort of... No, definitely not. Um, you're not there to fix the problem. You're there to just to help. Exactly. You right. know, yeah. you can't fix it. No. Like, it, it's, it's always going to be there. Mm. Um, and, yes, time heals. Like, one day you'll be at peace with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll still be there. I mean, you'll still remember him. And all that sort of stuff, you know. It's for you. What for the listeners? How did you cope with? It? What were your coping mechanisms? I, I just feel that if if you could share that with with other listeners that have that have lost people um, suddenly, not not just in suicide, mm. but um, what steps did you go through, and, and how did you? Um, go through that. Yeah, well, I guess after the um, the the shock had sort of worn off, that that initial shock period is you know that's that's just shock. There's no other word for it. So once that had sort of worn off, the the very next process that I went through with my mates, you know, who were also mates with him, were the stories and the memories yeah. and the sharing the stories and the laughs and you know yeah half the time in the early stages we'd be telling the stories and we'd laugh and then we'd all burst into tears mm. um but you know even still now we talk about the stories and you know it's it's yeah that's memories yeah are the one thing that you've always got to got to hang on to and i think um i've got just the, only the best memories I only remember just the best memories of of you know my mateship with Dan and that's all anyone remembers and I think it's really an important lesson because when you know the reality is is no one gets through life unscathed and shit's gonna happen you know mm. um, and we will lose people close to us but it's those memories that you hang on to and so I think to wind it right back it's really important to remember to you know cherish every moment that you've got and, and the days that you've got while you've got breath in your lungs um to be making good memories because you know at the end of the day that's that's the the one big thing that we've got to hang on to so use those moments wisely and 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 have a good time have fun we're here for a good time not a long time you know so, so it's fair to say that 
after morning celebrate the life they had oh yeah for sure absolutely yeah yeah that's awesome yeah um i mean you know there's always those those days in the in that sort of two-year period following it's just like you know sometimes you just think what a waste what a waste of a life Mm. um and you know what could have been um but you know i think as you say time heals all wounds and um you know (laughs) For me, such a confusing period, but to look at where, where through that event, how our lives have unfolded to now be doing what we're doing, I take great joy in knowing that Dan would be up there somewhere looking down and just absolutely laughing his ass off. He sounded like a bit of a character. Oh, he was an absolute character. He was he was he was he was one of the greats. He was one of the finest characters. Um, but you know, if he knew what we were doing now with this and with our shirts and mm. some of the things we've done, locking ourselves in freaking portaloos and you know just some of the funny stuff that we've done, he'd just be having a crack up, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's great. Uh, so trade much started what year? Last year, March 16th, it officially, launched. That, is it officially? Yeah, it was officially yep. stocking stuff. So that was the, yeah, day one. Exciting time. Very exciting time. Stressful time? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, there's <laughs> always, you know, comes with anything, especially yeah. like, you know, I always grew up with the, you know, the philosophy from my um, parents, like, you know, stick with what you know. And you know, I was like, yeah, country kid. And yeah, we're both hands-on type dudes. And um, yeah, everything sort of rock up to a job site and set of plans and away you go um but this one was sort of like it's a bit of an out there idea but shit we think we might be able to do it um and then sort of just went with it because we were like we just backed ourselves basically um and then yeah when it all launched and that it was um yeah it was pretty pretty hectic It was pretty hectic but we loved it and yeah still loving it now and then and we've just learned so much it's just outrageous yeah we, we got to a point there where we were we were in too deep you know, yeah. we're, oh, wow. we're we're in to, to to a certain level, oh, and we'd, shit. we'd been on we're the on news, it, yeah. and then we had a, you know, social media pages, and we're telling people this is what we're doing. So we're like, well, we're we gonna have, have to keep, bloody do it, aren't we? Keep doing yeah. It, so. <laughs> uh, so yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. The worst outcome for us was, you know, when we launched, we we obviously worked our asses off to be able to. You know, in the early days before launching, to be able to buy buy two laptop computers, which neither of us owned, um, to be able to run the business. Was that like a foreign <sighs> object to you guys, or? Well, I, yeah, we hadn't really used. Uh, well, I hadn't used a laptop since college, um, and yeah, Dan didn't know what Control C, Control V was, so it was very <laughs> foreign for him. I, I I got home and dropped my box down the stairs, like with the computer <laughs> in it, and then um, you know. <laughs> the very real possibility of using it as a chopping board there for a bit, but um, <laughs> not expensive. No, nah, yeah, we we afforded a couple of computers, and you know we probably got you know, completely. They, they would have seen us coming. coming. Yeah, we had no coming. idea what we, and we bought probably bought the most expensive thing in the shop. <laughs> probably, and, 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 yeah. So don't use its capabilities. Yeah. Were you wearing your shirts at the time? No, um, well, we didn't even have the prototypes oh, that were correct yet. Okay, in the I was going to say that so, they would have seen you coming. Yeah, yeah, so we had the so we had the yeah the the prototypes sort of back and forth to China for, you know, months, sort of eight months, six to eight months, mucking around. And then we finally, um, yeah, got the three samples back, well, the four samples back that were like, yeah, shit, this is it. We've got them now. Let's wear, let's just, let's just wear them and just see what happens. So we just put them on and um, we used to have our shareholders meeting every Thursday at the Newstead Brewery in Newstead, <laughs> Thursday afternoon, four o'clock. And, um, yeah, we went down there and Another Shout mate out of ours, to the Newstead Brewery, yeah, Newstead, Newstead Brewery sponsors, and then sponsors. the yeah. um, the our uh, another mate of ours, Russ. Um, he he had connections and stuff in China, so he was helping us out a lot um, with getting our stuff made. And uh, we went down there and gave him one to put on. So the three of us are sitting there, and we sat there for two hours. And six different people came up to us and asked us in those two hours what the fuck the guy was with these shirts. Um, yeah, and we just let them know and told them what we we're doing and we're sort of launching this brand and. It was all sort of happening, and the last person that came up to us was um, an editor from Quest magazine. It's a local rag paper in um, Brizzy. It just does the sort of the four, yeah, areas, so north, south, east, and west. And um, he said, "Oh, can we run a story?" And um, 
Dan Noel, like, oh, yeah, you can, but just give us some heads up because, A, we haven't bought any, we haven't ordered any of these shirts yet. B, the website's not ready to go. And then C, we just need to have our, 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 all our ducks in a row. And he's like, yeah, that's no worries. And um, anyway, the next day, um, we were still working for that, that same builder we had been. I was, yeah, I'd been signed off by then. So I was, yeah, overrunning a job in Ascot at the time. I got a phone call from um, Channel 7 oh, wow. saying, oh, we want to run a uh, story. Um, I've just read. And I was like, shit, when? And they're like, oh, in about an hour? I was oh, like, what? fucking hell, what? righto. <laughs> so I rang Dan up. I was like, quick, get, go back home, get your shirt. Go I've got to drive, drive back home, get my <laughs> shirt because we had, well, they were the only samples we had in the world. So we couldn't wear them to work. We had to keep them looking good. So I had them at home. So I went back, got them, put them on, got to the job site. Channel 7 rocked up and um, they're like, righty oh, we'll, um, we'll yeah, do it with this and shit with that and have a, have a chat and... <clears throat> And we said, oh, when are you like when are you airing it? And they said, oh, at four o'clock. I'm like, oh, right, just like just locally in Brisbane. She's like, no, Queensland. So like, holy shit! So I had to ring up. Jeez, I don't muck around. I know. So we rang up our mates um, who'd been helping us with the website. We're actually also working on their house at the time over in Albion. Um, these two graphic design uh, designer twin brothers and um, twofold, twofold twofold design. Yeah, great dudes. Guy and Rob. So I rang yeah, yeah. Um, rang guy up and I said, uh, shit, mate. Are we going to be able to pull the trigger on that website tonight? He's like, mate, you are so lucky. I've been working on this thing for two weeks, just in my spare time, and it's ready to go. I was like, beautiful. Got on about our manufacturer in China, and I put the order in for fifteen hundred shirts, and um, so they were getting made. And then, like, yeah, pulled the trigger, and then the news article came on, and um, yeah, it went ballistic. We yeah broke even in three days. We caught a virus, I believe. Yeah, the virus just broke out and. Um, yeah, so then we'd ha- we yeah we pretty much well we pretty much sold out of our shirts before they got to Australia. Those fifteen hundred, they yeah, it was what, all, sold before they we even sold them before they got here. Yeah, fifteen hundred. Wow. Yeah, so, so we were secretly shitting ourselves because yeah, we, we were pumped like, every last dollar we had to end. Every last things. dollar was in there. We've sold it was a, all in a wedge of them. Um, you know, people like. <laughs> yeah, are you just, guys still doing tradie work at this stage? Or uh, we were, yeah. yeah, at that stage we were. Yeah. You guys must have been flat out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was it was pretty busy, but we were just hoping they they arrived and were. We were just hoping they were yeah going to rock up and everything was going to be correct because that was it. Like our biggest thing was always they have to be super good in quality because yeah. no one will buy a shit work shirt twice. They'll buy it for a novelty once, but yeah. they won't buy it twice if it's shit. Yep, they, and they, we yeah. just could not let that happen. So we'd we'd gone over to China and made sure it was all sweet. Once we saw them, it was like uh, yeah. It's, they're all good. We're, we're going to be sweet. And then, um, yeah, got into Australia and, yeah, the reviews we've had have just been phenomenal. I mean, out of what now we've sold over nearly five and a half, six thousand units. Yep. And there's been two shirts that have ripped. That have ripped. And, and then there's one that came without yeah. a button. So mm. we're like, she's happy, pretty happy with that strike yeah. rate. Mm. That's pretty damn good. <laughs> we're pretty happy. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Wow. I know. Well, that that happened really fast. Mm. Telling me, yeah, yeah, it was that, nuts. that's a roller coaster ride. After we went to China to check on the to check on the production of the shirts, you know, we came back and uh, came back on work on a Monday, and um, I was for the building company we worked for. I was running things in the office at that time, and Ed was out on a job at uh, Newmarket, and that's right. He got to work and. Had a cup of coffee in my hand. Had a cup of coffee, <laughs> rocked in there. With a bit of whiskey in it. Put his boots on, walked through the site gate, looked at the Renault, turned around, got in his car, quit on the spot. <laughs> he was full-time yeah, trade, I'd, mate. I'd quit before I'd finished my coffee. Uh, the proudest day of my life. <laughs> rang, rang the missus and I said, I've just quit. She's like, shit, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know, but we're going to make it work. We're going to sell shirts. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, and there were lots of times. Oh, and everyone thought we were mad. I mean, even the, like, the years, the years oh, rolling into mad, it. Yeah, but the years rolling into it, we were you're right, you know, we are. <laughs> telling people at Smoko and stuff that, you know, because we're all, every afternoon we're going to meetings trying to find the right people to put us in the right track to get this stuff made because yeah with the background we had we didn't have any idea about textiles had no idea about dealing with china and everything everything that this business was made at like to make this business work we didn't know shit it about was it foreign yeah. well everything was we knew, foreign we all we knew was what we knew a work shirt needed to look like yeah, we it knew had to be yeah. this tough we, like, knew, one we knew one thing and that was what we the work had to be so um <laughs> yeah for it to all happen and all, everyone just thinking we're insane um and at times we thought we were nuts too and we we'll still do. 
We do, but, but the, it was but, just, and yeah, yeah, we still do. But the thing with thinking we're nuts sometimes, or not having, you know, just is it. Neither of us are really scared of failure, and we know that we've got each other by our side. So if he's in, I'm in, and if I'm in, he's in. So we're, well, we're just both goes, in. If it all goes to shit, we can just go buy a second-hand Hilux and buy a couple of <laughs> toolboxes and put our tools back in it and fucking go <laughs> and put, knock up a couple of frames. So And oh, we'll have a heap of shirts to wear yeah. if we do it forever. <laughs> You'll never go unclothed. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. At least on the top half anyway. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever thought about going the lower half? Yeah, we've got, yeah, we've got plans for, you know, for a whole bunch of different You could do your half half on your pants and you could have like Larry 80s flares. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> there you go. And sell block heels as well. Yeah. Strip yeah. heels. Steel so, cap heels. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. There's definitely plans to expand our, our line, um, you know, obviously still just such an early stage business. And, and we're turning one, and turning one, yeah, in two weeks. So, yeah, 16th of March is our first birthday. Yeah. Yeah, so. churn out some hard hats. All of that. Hard hats, yeah. Socks, we've got socks coming. That's probably the next, oh, next big thing. Yeah, mm. so that's, they'll have a secret little addition to them that will yeah, let everyone know when they rock out. Oh, a little bit of a teaser a here, bit is of it? A cheezer, yeah. Mm. So now that'll be, I think that'll be a little bit of a change up. I think people enjoy. You heard it here first, guys. Yeah, so maybe, that'll be maybe. good. Have you told anyone else? No. Yeah, Exclusive. No. Exclusive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, the high vision stuff in June is going to be huge for us. Um, and then, yeah, and th- then sort of this year is just sort of basically building our like wholesale partnership. So Trade Tools has, has come on. I was just about to bring that up. Ahead. Um, so Trade Tools has, has picked you up. Yeah. Tell us how that come about. That must have been such a proud moment for you guys. It's, yeah, it was. Yeah. It's, it's the coming together of two iconic like, Queensland <laughs> brands. brands. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. It all, always sort of made sense um, to us. Because our strategy has always been a lot different to everyone else. Because I mean, who we're taking on are like the big, big boys with a lot of money and a lot of shareholders, and mm-hmm. so we had to be pretty different. And not with just to wear their shirts, but yeah, our strategy to market and and selling it to people. Um, so I mean, Dan and I, we don't often go to like workwear stores, but you often go to like hardware store or you go to a tool shop. You know, like the amount of times we went at a you know, trade tools and picking up the latest Pazload framer or dropping off the drop saw that's, the big you know, boys the bushes toy are shop, done. Yeah, know? the big boys toy shop. Yeah. People love going there. So in, in our heads, it was, you know, it's a perfect fit for us to have our shirts in a place like that because A, there's no competition and, and B, it just adds a lot more to that experience. Well, to be honest, the competition is thin for your style. Yeah, well... Yeah, <laughs> overall. But like yeah. from a work shirt point of view, yeah, we're sort yeah. of like if we were in a tool shop, um, there's no other shirts there and yep. ours are so different mm. that it'd be intriguing. So it was just sort of um, we had some people reach out um, sort of on our behalf without us sort of knowing um, to trade tools, their marketing manager, Rachel. Um, and then, yeah, I think it, like our social media just grew pretty rapidly and uh, we're getting a lot of, you know, getting a fair bit of attention. Uh, and then she actually reached out to us um, in the end and said, um, like months, months and months after she, um, we'd ori- origi- or, sorry, originally reached out to her, um, she reached back to us and said, yeah, we're really keen to have a chat. Um, it was sort of three, three meetings and um, sort of getting down there and explaining it to people face to face sort of helps because if you, when we're on the phone, we can't really have the charisma and the, you know, let people know exactly how you we're doing this. Yeah. You can't see us. You can't see us. See stupid melon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just wreck the place, mate. You'll be right. <laughs> what do you got? No, no, Hang on. No, I can't hear you, mate. Can't hear you? No, no. Is it just the. Uh, can you hear us? Oh, hang on. There we go. Yep, that's it. Bump the on button. Up the off there we go. Button. There you go. I don't know how you've done it. Nailed it. got tomato it's sauce awesome. <laughs> on the back of your neck. <laughs> well done, son. <laughs> um, Ed got a little bit animated. I got a little bit out of control there. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, so Trade Tools, yeah, a few meetings with them and, and, and we got along like a house on fire with Rachel and, and she seemed to like us, so we're like, beauty. And then, yeah, they put their order in and it's been absolutely bloody gangbusters. I think they sold 80 units or something in their first, like, five days. Wow. So, um, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, so they're in all their stores and online as well, so... Um, trade Tools yeah. have done some awesome, um, really awesome stuff in the mental health space, you know, previously. Um, to this and so it's something that's 
you know, very close to, you know, to them and something that they really want to push um, and get that message out there as it is for, you know, all of our, you know, all of the companies, you know, we've aligned with Brett's Timber and Hardware and um, are a massive, massive supporter. Um, so, yeah, trade tools were, were really cool to get behind it. And, um, you know, I just think... Um, the message is the is the most important thing. I mean, the the the, the funky workwear is fun, uh, but you know, there's a purpose a, towards yeah, it. Yeah, and and that's mm. the, and that's the thing, and it's just the approach. You know, no one wants to. It needs to be fun. It needs to be lighthearted for blokes, particularly because you know it's just uh, that's everything's just like bloody doom and gloom. It's the only way to come. Yeah. Out. Like let's yeah. just fuck. We've all got mental health. Let's just bloody talk about it. You know. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's just that everything. Yeah, the way sort of we see everyone else doing their stuff it, it doesn't really resonate with us so like fuck it we'll just do it our own way so it's like you know either yeah either like it or you don't and it's yeah the other we thing we think it's working the other thing with uh with trade tools um is that you know as we know or anyone who goes and buys tools you know whether it's for a living or just for the weekend warrior it's a fun place to be oh it's it's like Bunnings or it, it's Aldi just, or it is really is J-Car or, it's the you big know. boys awesome. you know, toy shop. Yeah. You, know, you go in there. And it's like candy for adults. Mm. Yeah. And, you, and you know, you, you walk through the aisles and you, you look at everything and you <coughs> sort of add stuff to your wish list, but then you start to sort of think about... <laughs> and you walk out with what, a what shit you, that you don't need. Yeah, but exactly right. You start to think about what your budget You'll is and what, what do you actually need and what else do you need and what you can fit in the budget and what can I tweak this week that, you know, I can just get this or that. Or well. have the tool that no one else has got on yeah. site and like, check this out. Yeah, bloody oath. And so for a place like that, it's a, it's a fun place for, for people to go. It's a, it's a comfortable, safe, and it's, you know, a bit of an uplifting joint because you're there to get some toys that's yeah. going to make you feel good. So to piggyback off that vibe, um, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, Trade Tools are also sort of creating it as a, as a safe, you know, place where, you know, not only can you feel good here, but, you know, you can talk, you can talk to the staff, you know, they're supporting it, you know, such a, such a you know, an important cause and making it very visual. Um, and that's the thing. We've got some prime real estate in, in all the Trade tool stores. You can't miss us. Mm. And, um, I think it's great that you've started with a Queensland company that's Queensland. Like, mm-hmm. it's, you've got this little bubble, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, that, that you can work with yeah. and, and get the feelers out. And 100%. see how it's gonna how it's gonna run, and like they are the big dogs in the tool industry. So yeah, huge, yeah, yeah. And to, and to have that sort of seclusion is a good starting point for you guys to see how this is gonna roll out, and it's it's obviously rolling out very well. Mm. Yeah, that's so, no, so great. Yeah. 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 Well, with a bloke like uh, Madman Brad, a personality like that, you know, being the voice for trade tools and, yeah. and putting it out there. I mean, again. It keeps it really relatable for people that see it, you know. If a bloke like that, such a character, can, um, you know, can talk openly about this stuff and get behind such a cause, even though it's his job because he works for trade tools. But he believes in it, you know. He believes in it, you know, thoroughly and and loves it. And it's only just been, you know, very personally affected by a close suicide himself. Um, So Yeah, absolutely. um, Yeah, it's really fine, you know, getting that right balance of A, the message, you know, B, the product, but C, the, the kind of voices that are also behind it because we need to create that culture um, yep. where, you know, blokes... For someone so prominent to come out, I, I don't, you haven't listened to his podcast yet? No, not through, great. No, no. Through here. Have a listen to it. It's, it's a good podcast. Um, he, he's a really he was he's a really down to earth guy, um, and he, he's got that eccentric. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's such the extrovert. So he is the perfect guy to get this out here. He's yeah. the same bloke um, in 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 person as what you see on absolutely his, on his videos. He's definitely uh, yep. wears his heart on his sleeve and and peep. That's what people you know, and that's what we we do too. It's just like you got to be yourself, mm. and people see through bullshit. So I was like, yes. you know. It's, yeah, you and can't. there's more and more and more of that going on today than ever. <laughs> I know, and I think that's why we've been so lucky because, like, when we started off, like, it's like, fuck, no, is anyone going to really listen to our shit? And we just, yeah, we just put it out there and people seem to be so, and they seem to be relating to our messages. So, yeah, it's great. We love it. And, yeah, it's the same thing with Brad. He just keeps putting his stuff out there and people froth it. So, yeah, keep doing it. 
keep doing it. Awesome, guys. Well, I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing for the community. Uh, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. We need more guys like you out there doing this. Um, so I heard someone say one day that, oh, why don't they just combine all the stuff together? And I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you've got different different strokes for different folks. Yeah. And um, the fact that everyone has variety um, and uh, in, in different areas that they can um, they come and lean on. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys uh, are really pay, paving the way. So you guys are fantastic. Thanks, Thank you mate. so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to come and no worries. into this humble little man cave. <laughs> That's great. Um, and, and have a chat and, and get your message out there. So to finish up, where can everyone find you? Social media, websites, all that sort of stuff. Give yourself a massive plug and, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, we're um, – so, yeah, trademutt.com. Um and our uh, social media is, yeah, on Facebook, we're yeah, just Trade Mutt and um, Instagram at Trade Mutt. And it's all the, uh, all the Trade all, Mutts. All the Trade Mutts. All the Trade That's Mutts. That's M-U-double-T. Yeah. M-U-double-T. One wolf, word. Wolf. Is it one word, two words? One word. Yeah, one word. One word. One word. That's the old logo, actually. Where'd you dig that up from? Oh, you know, Google's a lovely place. Yeah. Have a go That's the old, <laughs> old original. Looks good. Yeah, yeah it's great. Right. Go back to the roots. Mate, you've nailed it. <laughs> great stuff. Thanks, guys. I Thank really you. appreciate it. And I wish you all the best in the future. No worries, Thanks brother. You too. Much for having us, Cheers. Kev. Good on you. For anyone suffering from mental health issues, please contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. Create a support network with friends and family and start talking. Thank you for listening.